Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys, man. Now I'm going to do town business. Top five movies of 2019. And it wasn't that hard to tally up these particular five movies that I saw. Uh, I frequently go to the movies. So I try to go to the movies like maybe once a month. So I went to the movies. Uh, I went to the movies a few times this year. So I saw enough movies to uh, come up with this list. All right, here we go. Coming in at number five, Ford versus Ferrari. Great movie. Love that movie. Matt Damon, Kristen Bell stars in the movie. Uh, basically about uh, the Le Mans race where basically uh, people didn't respect Ford as a serviceable race car because, you know, Ferrari was just like the car of that time. And basically, there was a deal in place where Ford was going to buy Ferrari, but basically, Ferrari finessed, uh, basically used Ford basically to get more money for, from Fiat. And Enzo Ferrari basically clowned uh, Henry Ford, I think, the second. So it was just hilarious, but it's a great tale. You know, uh, movie is maybe 10 minutes a little too long, but besides that, uh, it was a great movie. Uh, They're talking possibly Oscar nominations for both Matt Damon and Christian Bale. So that's my number five movie. All right. Coming in at number four. John Wick Parabellum. <laughs> Violent Masterpiece. This is Keanu Reeves, Keanu, Keanu Reeves, which whatever you prefer. This is his third uh, movie in the John Wick franchise. Probably the most violent one. This movie has non-stop violence from beginning to end. This is a guy's movie. I mean, if you want to see good old faction action, ass kicking, you know, this is the movie for you. And basically the end pretty much lets you know that it will be a part four. I mean, basically all hell breaks loose and John wick number three. I'm looking forward to the fourth one. They're saying that John wick chapter four should be out in 2021. I am looking forward to that movie. Uh, can't wait to see it. So, it is what it is. All right, you guys. Now, coming in at number three. I like this movie. A lot of people had mixed feelings about it, but I liked the movie. I understood the movie. Uh, some people just had an issue with how it ended, but I enjoyed the movie. I got a lot out of it. Okay. Coming in at number three was The Queen and Slim, starring Daniel Kaluuya and basically some black lady I've never seen before in my life. A lot of people are talking possible Oscar nomination for her. But this tells the tale of a black couple that meet online and basically have a first date that pretty much turns deadly when they encounter a racist, white supremacist piece of shit you know, cop who was just destined and determined to look for a reason to shoot them. But basically the ties is turned. Uh, there is a struggle. Slim ends up shooting and killing the cop. And basically they go on a, uh, st basically state to state, you know, run from law enforcement. And along the way, people recognize who they are, but they are protected by, pretty much predominantly black people who kind of understand. Now, some of the elements in the movie, people didn't like the whole element about, you know, uh, the whole black cop thing. There's something, if you haven't seen the movie, there's something in there that happens to a black cop and with a black kid. So I don't want to spoil the movie. If you haven't seen it, 
So a lot of people didn't like that element. Then some people didn't like how the movie ended. But of course, you should have known that the movie was going to end the way it did. So it has it has a, a a mixed message in it. Some people understood. Some people didn't like it. But that's my number three movie coming in at number two. Joker. Starring Joaquin Phoenix. Many people believe he is the front runner to win best actor. Keep in mind, this isn't out of the ordinary for a actor to win a award for playing a comic book character. As you know, Heath Ledger, who many people thought was the best Joker, period, hand down, could never be topped. Well, that was until Joaquin Phoenix took the role. Uh, this movie basically tells the story of Arthur Flick, a failed comedian, uh, just part-time uh, uh, side, you know, street street performer that basically, you know, um, he basically suffers just trials of tribulation and just traumatic events from his mother to his upbringing. And it basically sets the toll for him to basically lose his mind. Now, another message that people didn't like about this movie is the element with him basically being around a whole bunch of black people. A lot of people thought it was a racially subliminal message, basically saying that Arthur Flick's life was as bad as being a black person. So a lot of people didn't like that element of the movie. You heard uh, Boyce Watkins talk about it. You heard Tariq Nasheed talk about it. So some people had a problem with that element. Me, myself, I thought it was great. I highly recommend the movie. As you guys know, this movie uh, broke all kind of box office records. If I'm not mistaken, this movie is the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. And Joaquin Phoenix has signed on to do a, a sequel. And so has director Todd Phillips. When the sequel will come out, that remains to be seen. Will he end up ever clashing with Batman? That remains to be seen. So at number two, I have the Joker. All right. My number one film of the year is Eddie Murphy as Dolomite. I have watched this movie like five times. I saw it at the show. I've seen it on Netflix. It's a great movie. Everybody that's seen it loved the movie. Now, you know, Eddie Murphy is under fire a little bit because of some of the comments he made about Bill Cosby. But this is a great movie. Eddie Murphy, you know, performs as his own version of Dolomite. For those who don't know, Dolomite was this uh, raunchy comedian who basically career took off while he was like in his mid 40s. Dolomite was like in his mid forties when he, when he blew up and Dolomite was a comedian uh, that did records. His records were very raunchy and basically he got an idea to do a movie. Uh, he borrowed money, got advances from his uh, uh, record labels, uh, excuse me, record label executives. And he financed this movie called Dolomite a uh, real funny movie. It went on to become a success. It was at the time what you would call a black exploitation movie. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't exactly say this was a contender for the Oscars, but for what it was worth, it was a funny movie. I saw the movie and Eddie Murphy uh, did a great job as Rudy Ray Moore. They are talking Oscar nomination for Eddie Murphy. This movie Received a lot of critical acclaim. Um, mostly everybody that I know that saw this movie, loved this movie. Um, they recommend this movie. So I recommend if you got Netflix to try to watch this movie. Now, the kicker with this movie that Netflix is going to have to figure out what to do is Netflix need to find a way to where they can like put some of these films on DV DVR. You know. 
they really are going to have to find a way to figure out how they can do that. So with that being said, that is town business top five movies of the year. I'm out.